Hi, I'm Dr. Constance Sharp. I am the Director of Addiction Research and Community Education at Cliffside Malibu Addiction Treatment Center. And today on the Addiction Treatment Show, we're going to talk about uh, how long should you stay in rehab? What is the optimal length of stay for an individual to get better and really have a chance at long-term recovery from substance abuse? The standard answer that we get from insurance companies, and I want to underscore it's insurance companies that give this response, is 21 to maybe 28 or 30 days. And insurance companies want you to go to a, the lowest level of care possible um, and fail out of that before going to a traditional uh, residential treatment center. And I'm here to say that the research simply doesn't bear that out as the best course of action. We know from the research, and you can look this up online, this is long-standing um, information of many, many decades duration, that the optimal time in treatment in residential care is usually 90 to 120 days, sometimes more. And what we want to do in residential treatment is work to outcomes, right? So if you break your arm, the you know insurance company doesn't get to say, well, you're going to get a cast for 21 days, and if after 21 days you're not better, it doesn't matter, we're removing the cast, right? That's not how that works. And so what we want to encourage people when they're looking at addiction treatment and addiction treatment centers is to maximize whatever their insurance is going to do, but recognize that it's probably not going to be enough. So why do you need so long in um, residential care or in addiction treatment? Well, the first thing that's gonna happen in addiction treatment is you're gonna spend probably seven to 10 days, in some cases more, in active detox, right? Removing yourself, being removed from in a medically supervised detox, the substances of abuse. And what that means is you're not really doing a lot of good psychological work during that period. That's just the truth of it, right? When we're not feeling well, when we're detoxing, we're not going to do the really deep digging psychological work that is usually associated with addiction treatment. So after that period, which tick, tick, tick is counting in that 21 to 28 day model, um, we also, after that is finished, we're going to work with the family and with the issues that an addict has with their family. Because the addict needs a strong support system once they leave treatment. And addiction doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? So we're going to work on those relationships that are broken between um, the addict and their parents, their spouse, their children, whatever that support system is, we're going to work on that in that period. Do you think that relationships that are broken over years are going to be magically fixed in 14 or 21 days? Of course not. That's not how that works. We have to teach the addict what their triggers are. You know, we know that if you regularly start drinking at 5 o'clock every evening, that we need to do something to set you up for success, which means not drinking at 5 o'clock every afternoon. And we have to prepare the addict to get them used to that new schedule. We also have to make uh, an assessment as to whether or not there are co-occurring disorders that are happening. In just over 50% of cases of addiction, the individual also has a co-occurring psychological disorder. That could be anxiety, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Those are some of the most common ones with depression and anxiety being far and beyond the ones that we see the most often. So we have to make a concurrent treatment plan to work with those disorders. And we're also looking at brain change. Addiction changes the structure and function of the brain. And in order to make addiction treatment work long term, we have to start to change the brain in positive and healthy ways. And like losing weight, or like lifting weights and bulking up, getting healthier, it simply takes time. And you can't do it in a very, very short-term program. There's also something that's called complex addiction or treatment-resistant addiction. 
And what that is, is in a lot of cases, really, where individuals just don't get it right away, that it takes time and sustained effort, support, therapy, uh, uh, complementary treatment in order to get an individual on the path to recovery. And so usually we say, oh, well, that we sent them to treatment for 30 days or 60 days and they didn't get it and I'm done, right? They're non-compliant. We blame the lack of recovery on the addict when in fact far in most of the cases it really is that the individual just hasn't received sufficient treatment so we don't want to blame you know initial non-compliance right that's what we call it in the field non-compliance on the addict right they probably just need more help than what they've been getting so I want to encourage you, if you're an addict who needs help, if you're the loved one of an addict and you have someone in your life who needs treatment, reach out, get it now, and ask questions of your uh, potential treatment providers. Ask them straight up, how long is my loved one or how long am I going to spend in addiction treatment? And any good quality treatment center is going to tell you probably a lot longer than you think. So be prepared for the long haul. And um, I wish you all the best. Reach out for help. Do it today. Do not wait. Overdose is not bottom. Your bottom can be now. Call for help.